Hey everybody, it's Pastor David from Walden Community Church. Happy St. Patrick's Day, right? <laughs> it's St. Patrick's Day today, which is, just seems so strange, but uh, I'm wearing green, maybe you are. If you see somebody today who's not wearing green, please don't pinch them because social distancing, right? We can't, we can't celebrate that way. My last name's Kenny. My wife's last name is McDermott. Our two children, uh, we named Irish names also. So we've kind of always felt Irishy in our family. And maybe if you're going through your drawer and trying to find a shirt to put on, uh, you might have a shirt, right, that has a clover on it, three leaf clover. And whenever we think about Irish heritage or Irish nationality, I think the clover, the three leaf clover comes up in our minds as being like a symbol of Irish people or of Ireland, right? But in truth, if you study Irish history or Irish folklore, you're not going to see the three leaf clover pop up anywhere as being a symbol that the Irish people identified with. That is at least until St. Patrick was on the scene. St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. He was a missionary, probably from Rome, that brought the gospel to Ireland. And probably as a student of Jesus, he wanted to tell stories and try to uh, find a way to associate the gospel with their culture. And so he probably invented this parable of showing the clover that it had three leaves and then using it to tell them about the Trinity, telling them about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And ever since then, now uh, the clover is everywhere and we'll even see uh, St. Patrick holding a clover in uh, his pictures. There's other stories. There are other stories about St. Patrick. There's a story that he took his staff and planted it into the ground. And after he did that, it turned into a tree, into a tree. Uh, do we believe that story? Probably not, right? That probably didn't happen. Uh, there's also a myth about how St. Patrick drove all the snakes out of Ireland. You probably heard that one, right? If I were to ask you, do you know anything about St. Patrick? You'd say, yeah, he drove all the snakes out of Ireland. But again, if you go through history, there, there's no evidence of that. There's even no evidence that, that the Ireland ever had a giant snake infestation. It's more likely that um, the snake has always been uh, a symbol for evil or villainy or paganism. And in telling the story of how St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland, it was probably a way of telling the story that as a missionary, he came to Ireland and spread the gospel and drove paganism out of Ireland. In fact, in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus even calls the false teachers of his day snakes. He calls them brooding vipers. So that symbolism probably connected with St. Patrick's Day for me. And I started thinking about rumor and false information, lies, uh, things that just get spread around, not just back then, right? But also today. There's a really great passage in uh, 1 Timothy 4, 7. It says, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. I mean, if you ask the average person today, they might even think St. Patrick was Irish, right? St. Patrick wasn't Irish. He was more than likely a Roman missionary. And I wonder what St. Patrick would think today about all the stories and the misinformation that gets told about him and how he was probably more than likely just an average guy, an average missionary just trying to spread the gospel, right? There's a passage in James chapter three that talks about how powerful our tongue is, that it has the power to do both good and bad. And James says, can fresh water come from the same spring that contaminated water comes from? He says, no. And he says, and yet this large vessel, meaning our body, right, is steered by such a small rudder, our tongue. In verse 10, he says, out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. You know, sometimes I don't think we even know what we're saying. Sometimes we hear something from someone we know or worse, we get something from someone we know in an email and we pass it on without even checking to see if it's true. We need to be more careful about our words and we need to make sure that what we say is not harmful. 
Proverbs 10.9 says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. That's a great passage for us today. Can you remember that passage for me today? It's Proverbs 10.9. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely. And I just think with so much misinformation that's going on right now, we all can get so turned around. Let's make sure that we are doing our part to share true things, to not lie, to not embellish, to not spread panic, to not spread fear. We need to be people of truth. We need to be people of truth who speak right and who speak righteously. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay indoors if you can. I love you guys, we'll see you soon.